All right, so I think that's that's a good stopping point on Alabama because we really didn't get to see much from this offense after week one, and that was, like we said, by design. Bama got the win. On to the next one where they can really kind of flex their muscles and sort of sort out some of these pieces, these new faces. But one team that was really, I think, dead set on getting a player, a new face comfortable is Auburn. Um, and they had a little bit of a struggle, a kind of an ugly game uh, opener in the season, which, you know, that, that can happen. That, that, that's to be expected when you're breaking in a new quarterback. Um, but talk about, I guess, not only what we saw a little bit from Auburn, but get us into this massive Auburn-Clemson game this weekend. I, I feel like, unlike, let's take a step back, because this is kind of an interesting question to me. Unlike last weekend, where all the analysts were saying it doesn't matter to Florida State or Alabama if they win or lose this game, either one of these teams can run the table after this with a loss and get back into the playoffs. I think that can also happen with Auburn against Clemson, but I also think it this game for Auburn means a little bit more to Auburn than the Florida State game meant to Alabama. Is that fair? Yes. I think so. Um, and I think it's true because the assumption was always that Alabama and Florida state, you know, being one in three, if one of them lost their young teams, they'll turn it around. Um, and it may not be indicative of anything till the mid- end of the year. And there's already so much credit given to them. Auburn really kind of has to prove themselves, right? Because they've been for the past couple of years, they've been losing these games consistently. Um, really dating all the way back to the kick six game uh, in 2013. So, you know, this is a chance for them to prove themselves and it's important. And they, the loss last year to Clemson in a close game was tough. Um, They've played Clemson several times now in the past decade. So I think, you know, Auburn is going to be looking here to make a statement and to say, Hey, we're back. Uh, It's more than just, you know, the schedule it's, it's kind of defining the program really and saying what they're capable of and the kind of team that they want to be. So get us a little bit into this game. I I think it's funny because people are going to read too much into Auburn's kind of struggles against Georgia Southern this past weekend and read too much, I think, into Clemson's successes against a Kent State team that I think they were like three and nine last year and they were without their head coach uh, against Clemson in the opener. But we did have some worries for Clemson this year that they were going to struggle replacing their quarterback. And I still don't know if they've done that. Like, I, 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 it's so frustrating because when you play a nothing team, you know, you can light them up and then look terrible the next week. But did we learn anything from Clemson? Did we learn anything from Auburn? Or is this game a complete and absolute crapshoot and kind of get us into this game and, and what you think we're going to see? Well, first off, Kent State did went go. Th- Kent State not only did they go three and nine last year, but they they kind of had to overhaul their team. Um, at, you know, like Athlon's preview, I think had them one hundred and twenty seventh nationally out of one hundred and thirty teams. So I say that just because there was nothing you can take away from Clemson beating Kent State. Uh, uh, frankly. You know, and, and I did watch quite a bit of that game trying to gear up for this preview. And what I immediately saw was, you know, they, they had a long touchdown run on their first drive and they had that touchdown run because the middle linebacker did a poor gap fit. Uh, the DT stunted and, you know, the running back went right behind tackle and there's nobody there and he just kept running. And to some degree, the amount of talent the running back had to be able to that, you know, he had the speed to cut through and nobody, you know, the safety couldn't get there was one thing. But there was no one in that gap. It wasn't even like they had to block anybody, really. Uh, and you know, games like that are good to just sort of get some real world experience. And I've often said this, right? You know, a lot of the the best offenses get that way because they get good at practicing against air. Um, it's a lot of times why the best offenses uh, that Malzahn had were paired with really bad defenses, uh, because you know, in practice, they just they work on good reps. They they would. They would uh, put, you know, the backups, the second or third string team in and they would run against them with the starters. And the whole idea was they wanted a clean rep each and every time. So they remembered what it felt like. And when they did that, they could operate at a very high level because, you know, you you practice, you play like you practice. 
And if you practice to be perfect or you practice perfectly, you're going to play better. The problem is it doesn't really give your defense a chance to go strong on strong. Uh, and the defense tends to lack physicality and tackling. Um, I say all that because essentially, if you want to call that first game of practice, Kent State was not a worthy opponent for Clemson in any shape, short, form, or fashion. Um, you know, Bryant looked very good. He still threw an interception. Um, but he didn't really have to compete against anybody. That pass defense is not good at all. Uh, and, you know, I, I can't take anything away from it. I don't think I know an iota more about Clemson than I did beforehand. Um, and the Georgia Southern game, frankly, was pretty similar. You know, Georgia Southern replaced six of their se- six of seven from their front seven. So there was no continuity in the front seven, and yet they still got pressure in that ball game. Now, it may be that Kent State has some new players that are good, but it's more than likely that they are going to be worse than they were last year when they weren't very good. Uh, and so, you know, I, I have real, real concerns right now about both the left tackle and the right tackle at Auburn and their ability to pass protect. I thought Stidham was exactly what I expected. Um, he can make every throw, but he holds the ball a little bit too long. He's not incredibly consistent within 10 yards. Again, he's a fairly accurate passer, um, but it's still a step back from Sean White, who was one of the most accurate uh, short and intermediate passers in college football. Uh, and so, you know, they have to throw that ball downfield. But the other thing we saw, like we talked about a lot in the previews, is Auburn does not have much continuity at all in the receiving core. Um, and the receivers dropped some balls that they absolutely needed to catch. They put a lot of balls in the turf. Um, and when carry on Johnson goes, at, came out, then, you know, that's another part of the receiving and run game. That's lost continuity. Uh, obviously getting Petway back will be big. And I think it's going to be more big just from the consistency angle than it will be, uh, you know, the, uh, the physicality or talent angle. But I will also say with Petway, who's a big back and needs momentum. You, you got to be able to get to the line of scrimmage. One thing I did take away is Kent from that Kent State game is Clemson's defensive line and front seven looks absolutely as nasty as it did last year. Um, they have, you know, Watkins is probably one of the best defensive linemen in the country. Uh, and yeah, I, you know, I, I get that, you know, you lose guys and you replace them, but Dexter Lawrence is a hell of an individual to try to be running over. And, and that front seven's got a lot of guys like him. And I am not sold that Auburn's going to be able to block him. And so I, I don't know. I, I don't know where this game is compared to what I was expecting. But my my gut is even though I was ready to pick Auburn and expecting to in week one, I have real concerns about the offensive line. Um and Stidham looks like he's a little, a little more rusty than I was expecting. Uh, and Clemson's offense and the speed and tempo is is going to get some points on the board. And I just don't think they're going to be able to handle Clemson's physicality at the line of scrimmage. And for that reason, uh, even though a week ago I was ready to pick Auburn, I am actually now going to pick Clemson. And I think this is a game is probably going to be a really low scoring affair. Uh, a lot like last year, um, but I, I think Clemson's just going to spend the entire game in the Auburn backfield, frankly. Um, and if that's the case, Petway, who's not, you know, if you got, if you got a lot of penetration, you want a quick back, not a powerful one, because you need somebody to sidestep the tackler in the backfield and redirect. Um, and I don't know that Petway is ever going to be able to get going. Um, and I, I think this could be a really long night uh, for the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, and something else you and I talked about today uh, when we were contrasting Bo Scarborough and Damian Harris's ability to block uh, kind of a free blitzer, um, you probably want a carry on Johnson back there helping you block more than you want a Cam Petway because they're generally going to be blocking someone that's pretty quick and agile. And if you've got a bigger kind of a more lumbering, powerful back they're they're not always the best solution to protect the quarterback, especially when the, the offensive line needs that help. Um, I, I could see that being the case again this week. Um, but talk about a little bit Clemson. So I agree with you. I think Clemson's going to put some pressure on that Auburn offensive line. Um, I also don't know that I'm in love with the Auburn wide receivers after week one. Um, 
But I was really excited about how well Carryon Johnson was running the ball. And if they had that one-two punch, uh, that could be something. But let's flip it over to the other side of the ball and talk about how Auburn's defense matches up against a Clemson offense that's replacing a lot of pieces and if that's where we find the silver lining for Auburn. Yeah, well, the first thing I'll say is as much as we talked about um, you couldn't take a lot from these games, the biggest thing you couldn't take away anything from was, uh, well, both one, how good Auburn's defense was and Clemson's offense, right? Because Kent State's defense was terrible, beyond terrible in that game. Um, And Georgia Southern's offense last year, Already one of the worst in the country. Uh, they, they were a triple option team that hired a coach that was not a triple option coach. Kind of, sort of decided to keep the triple option. Um, and, you know, Georgia Southern was a team that beat Florida just a few years ago. They're not even close to resembling that same team anymore. Um, and, you know, they're and, and they're quickly regressing. So uh, I say all that just to say I couldn't get anything out of Auburn's defense in that game I you know they they absolutely needed to dominate and so we're back to square one Um, I do think Auburn's front seven is powerful and that that should give everybody a challenge Um, I think it's still going to give Clemson a challenge I think the back seven you know they lost a fair amount of talent and I don't know you know I I just don't know how good the newcomers are going to be I liked a lot of the players who were back there before I haven't been you know, overly impressed with the safeties, frankly, the past few years. Um, and, and so, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I, I'm just not sold that they're going to be able to keep pace with Clemson. And last year, you know, it was pretty obvious, right? O- early in that game that Clemson, when the opener was rusty, Mike Williams dropped a number of balls um, and, and there just wasn't a lot of continuity, but um you know, I just don't, I guess I'm just not sold on Trey Matthews at safety. I, I think Steven Roberts is a pretty average safety. Um, most of the, you know, two out of three starting corners are gone uh, and they have theoretically the best one in Carlton Davis, but I think Holsey was a pretty darn good role player for them. Um, and I think the, you know, the front seven is solid and I think the linebacker, the defensive line's good, but I also think Montrevious Adams and Lawson were really tough for, for Clemson to block last year. And those guys are gone. They're probably the two most disruptive players. So I do I think they're going to give Clemson a hard time? Yes. Do I think they're going to give Clemson as hard a time as Clemson is going to give the Auburn offense? That, that answer is probably no. And it's funny the, the way you phrased your feeling about this game because all summer and leading into – week one I fully as well expected I fully expected to pick Auburn in this game and and I think now when you're talking about it being a road game for Auburn a true road game these home and homes are so rare I think it's pretty cool Um, and that combined with what we saw last week which it's not fair like you and I do everything every show we try to do it based on numbers based on what we've seen the week before based on what we've seen as a culmination of the season to that point and we've got such nothing to go on so we're we're kind of killing auburn here and it's not fair um because we could come out of the end of next you know the end of this weekend and see oh gosh uh week one really was nothing our gut was wrong and auburn's great and 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 they still might be, but I think for Auburn, they really wanted this to be their measuring stick game. And I'm, I'm worried that they're not going to be able to, to keep up with Clemson. I'm the opposite of you. I think this is going to be a little bit of a high scoring game. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning, I'm leaning Clemson as well. And I hate it because I feel like the SEC got off to what was potentially a great start. If A&M could have held on, got off to a decent start uh this weekend and that would have been a lot of momentum uh with with one and two our perceived one and two in the sec taking out one and two in the acc um and hey it still could happen but uh i i think we're at the point since we don't have a whole lot that we know about these two teams that we just got to go with our gut picks so why don't you give me a score prediction for this game uh auburn at clemson what have you got 
Uh, you know, again, I think it's tough to say, and I think we don't really know enough about these teams. It's practically, uh, practically an opener, but I'm going to go with Clemson 17, Auburn 10. Like, I think this is going to be, I think it's going to be super low scoring. Give me Clemson 31. Auburn 26. Okay. Um, I, I was completely wrong on the amount of points last week, and you were completely right. So I feel bad. Uh, I feel there's some wrongness there going against you. But 31-26 is mine. Um, it, tell me this uh, as we wrap up Auburn and Clemson. If Auburn wins this game, on Sunday, what are we going to be talking about that happened in that game for them to win it? I think if Auburn wins this game on Sunday, we're going to be talking about how good the Auburn defense is. Because I think okay, if this ends up a high-scoring game, I just don't think they're going to keep pace with the style of play that Clemson has and the sort of playmakers Clemson has. Um, so this has got to be a low-scoring game for Auburn. Um, but if, if it does get high, uh, then I, I think Clemson's going to outpace them. All right, so both of us not real high on Auburn beating Clemson this week. Hopefully we are wrong, and we are talking next week about how we completely whiffed.